Hi everyone, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week I'm excited to present part one of a four-part series on good practices for duct design. This week we're going to focus on system design and duct location. Without further ado, here's the training. So I'm just going to jump right into it. There's no easy way around this, and if you've seen any of my previous system design videos, I have to start with the basics, right? So in order to design your duct system correctly, you have to calculate the loads. You cannot guess. This is really important. You need to do an ACA Manual J version eight using software in order to calculate the loads for each room in order to then verify the duct sizes for each room, trunks, so on and so forth. So you're gonna use ACA Manual J. Of course, if you're doing uh, commercial duct design, you would do an ACA Manual N for commercial loads. I'm gonna be completely honest here too. Manual J is my forte, that's my specialty. If you're looking for commercial loads and commercial duct sizes, that's not really in these presentations. All right. So number two, the next step in the system design is to size the equipment properly. We cannot fix the duct system or you know, change the duct work if you don't have the right size piece of equipment. It's not gonna fix the real problem in the house, right? So you're gonna use ACA Manual S for residential applications in order to accurately size your equipment based on the load calculation provided, right? So if you're doing commercial, this would be manual CS. So you would do a manual N load calc, then your manual is CS for commercial sizing, right? For residential, it's manuals J, then manual S for sizing. And then of course, you're gonna use ACA manual D for residential sizing, duct sizing procedures. As you can see here, this is a screenshot out of one of my duct design classes. Um, if you're an elite member on Patreon, you have access to this, uh, this design class. Um, this is a duct sizing worksheet and you actually walk through based on the heat loss and sensible heat gain for each room, figuring the volume of air that needs to go to each room. And then of course using a duct calculator in order to size the runs for each room. All right, so those are the three basics, right? Just to get you to how to fix a duct system or good practices for duct system design. You gotta do the system design manuals first. It goes J, S, then D, all right? Now, for the real good tips here. Number one, uh, keep your ducts in the conditioned space as much as possible. This is not just uh, for mild climates or for extreme climates. Um, and this is why your ducts can be smaller because your system is smaller if you have all of your ductwork in the condition space. Now, um, you can see in the image here on the right, uh, the temperature of the attic air is typically anywhere from seven to 20 degrees more than what the temperature is outside. So as an example, if you don't rest your ductwork on top of the insulation, you actually suspend it in the attic, which we don't want you really to put duct work in an attic, that's probably the worst place you can put it for the summertime. But if you did, the attic air could be about 94 degrees. So you can imagine the temperature gain in the summertime if it's 87 degrees and that's your design temperature. So if, if you're not familiar, if you're from the Northeast, that's probably most cases along the coast, 87 degree outdoor design temperature is typically what you're designing to. And it's typically 94 or more. And if you're a technician and you're watching this, you know exactly what I'm talking about on design days. If it's warmer than design days, it's warmer in the attic, right? Um, the deck of that roof, the roof deck could be as much as, let's say 25 degrees warmer than outside. You can see if it's 87, it could be 119 degrees on that roof deck. And then of course the roof itself could be as much as 150 degrees. Um, that's why we don't attach ductwork to the roof, right? And try to use those uh, cavities along the roof to keep the duct off of the floor of the attic. Most homeowners prefer to have that storage space up there or they're gonna always condition the attic, right? Or condition the basement. Or um, If you were to keep it against an outside device like a roof or a floor or a wall it's probably the worst place you can locate a duct if it's everything within the building envelope the temperature difference across that duct is well nothing because anything lost is going to be coming into the space or anything gains coming from the space this is why ductless systems tend to be smaller than ducted systems because of where we're sticking all the ductwork right what'd you think did you like part one 
of good practices for duct design. If you wanna get these one year in advance, head over to my Patreon page where you can subscribe for as little as $8 a month. Looking forward to talking to you next week where we talk about routing of duct work and pressure loss. For HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. See you soon.